Nova and Hazelin help Lammy find her mummy. Welcome to the wonderful world of Glimmies, the magical place that lights up in the dark. Nova and Hazelin are playing in the forest. They're playing hide and seek. Hazelin is a very adventurous Glimmy. She's always on a treasure hunt, so hide and seek is her favourite game. Nova loves to play, but is always very responsible, especially when in the forest, as she loves nature and animals. She is hiding. What's that? thinks Nova. She can hear something crying. She comes out of her hiding place to find Hazelin. Why have you stopped hiding? We're supposed to be playing hide and seek. I can hear an animal crying. We should help. Ooh, let's see what is wrong. It's not long before they find mummy sheep. She looks very worried. I've lost my baby Lammy. Don't worry, said Nova. We will help find her. I love finding things, said Hazelin. The girls set about looking in the forest with their glimmy's light, illuminating all the dark spots. Lammy is not behind the trees. She's not hidden in the leaves. Ooh, look at this cave. It's all dark, said Hazelin. It's very dark in here, said Nova. But we have to help. Don't worry, said Hazelin. It's an adventure and I love finding things. She dives into the cave and it glows. Don't worry, mummy sheep. We'll help you find your baby. And soon she returns. She has Lammy with her. Glim, glim, hooray! The Glimmies take Lammy back to mummy sheep and everyone is happy again. Well done, Glimmies. Your lights have saved the day again. Welcome to the wonderful world of Glimmies, the magical place where everything lights up. It's morning in Glim Forest, and this is Mousy. Mousy runs the Glim Cafe with the other mouse Glimmy, Radina. <laughs> Mousy is upset. Why are you upset, Mousy? Radina is having a holiday today, and I have to run the cafe on my own, said Mousy. But I overslept, and I forgot to make the cakes and biscuits. What am I going to do? Oh dear, I can see that's a problem. Do you have time to make some more? I wish I did, but I also forgot to buy the flour and I have lots of glimmies coming to the cafe this afternoon. Don't worry, Mousy. I'm sure you'll find a way. Why don't you go and see Irilis? He always knows what to do when there's a problem in the glim forest. That's a good idea. I will go right now. Here we are at the glim tree. This tree is very special and is the meeting place for many Glimmies. But it is also the home of Irilis, the unicorn Glimmy, and the wise man of the forest. As a unicorn, Irilis has a glim horn, and he can detect when there is a problem. When he does, his horn magically lights up. Here is Mousy. Hello, Mousy, says Irilis as his horn starts to glow. What's the matter? Are you in trouble? Oh, Irilis, I just don't know what to do. I have lots of guests coming to the Glim Cafe this afternoon and I have run out of cakes. Redina is away and there's no one to help. I see, that is a problem. You don't want to let your guests down. Let me think. Irilis pondered. He walked up and down and round and round the Glim Tree while he was thinking. Suddenly he said, I know someone who might help. Do you know Honey Mia? I think so. Isn't she one of the Bear Glimmies? That's right, but she also runs the Glim Bakery. Why don't you go and see if she has any spare? She lives in Glim House Row. Mousy walked to the other side of the forest and found the row of Glim Houses. Hmm, what's that smell? She said to herself. It smells like cookies. Mousy followed her nose to the Glim House where the delicious smell was coming from. Just a minute, shouted a friendly voice. I'm just taking something out of the oven. A few moments later, the door opened and Honey Mia came out. Hello, Honey Mia. I'm hoping you can help me. I have run out of cakes for the Glim Cafe and I have lots of guests this afternoon. Do you have any spare? You're in luck. I have been experimenting this morning, making some new honey cakes. We all know how much Glimmies love honey. I've made a dozen, and I can't eat them by myself. You can take them with you if you like. I would love to know what your guests think. Oh, thank you, Honey Mia. You may have saved the day. 
Later that afternoon, as the Glim Cafe lit up with guests, everyone was tucking into tea and the lovely new honey cakes. Everyone loved them, including Irilis, who'd been invited as guest of honour. What a lovely time they had. Welcome to the wonderful world of Glimmies, the magical place where everything lights up. It's the weekend in the Glim Forest, and it's a very quiet day. Here are Abella, Castorinda and Lynxia. They are some of the hardest working Glimmies in all of the Glim Forest. The Rainbow Friends Glimmies are all best friends, and their lights change colour when they are close to each other. Abella runs the Glim Flowers shop, and as all the Glimmies love flowers, she is usually busy. Castorinda is an inventor, and she is usually beavering away creating new gadgets and structures for the Glimmies. And this is Lynxia. She has been really busy lately, as she is the tailor Glimmy, and she has been making curtains for all of the Glim houses. But today they are all having a day off, and they are looking for excitement. What are we going to do today? My sewing fingers are just itching to do something different. I agree. This week I have built a bridge over the Glim stream, and now it's finished, I just don't know what to do with myself. Let's explore the forest, suggested Abella. If nothing else, we could find a brand new flower for my shop. So off they go, three Glim friends looking for something fun to do. Here we are at the Glim village. Our three Glimmies have many friends who live there. Perhaps they can find more friends to play with. They call on the first house, which is where Honeymere lives. I don't think she is home, and I can't smell any cooking either. Let's try next door. Castorinda knocks on the next Glim house's door. This is where Sparia, one of the Glim doctors, lives, but there is no answer. That's strange. Sparia is normally at home at the weekend. I was hoping she would be around. The next house they come to is also empty. No one is home in all of the Glim village. This is a very quiet day and I'm getting very bored. We need to find something fun to do. The three friends walk back through the forest trying to find something to do. It's getting dark now and everything is lighting up. Suddenly, Lynxia stops. Glimmies, can you hear that? The three Glimmies friends stop and listen. There it is again. It sounds like laughing and music. Let's follow that sound. The Glimmies walked a little further and came to a clearing. And what a colourful sight they saw. There were all the other Glimmies lined up in front of the Glim Wheel, which must have come to the forest for the weekend. So here everyone is. And is that the Glim Wheel? Oh, that looks lots of fun. Let's line up for a go. They joined the queue and soon they were at the front where they met with Renelka, the mouse Glimmy, who helps to run the Glim Wheel. All aboard, said Renelka. One carriage at a time. Soon all three friends were riding round and round the Glim Wheel. Up and over they went. They could see for miles. Once their ride was finished, they joined all of the others and showed their enjoyment by lighting up and changing colours together. Trust you to think of inventions, said all of the other Glimmies together, as their lights danced in the moonlight. The Mystery of the Stolen Carrots Welcome to the wonderful world of Glimmies. Everyone in Glim World is puzzled. There seems to be a problem with the vegetable patch. Spinosita and Phoenicia are keen gardeners and they have been growing vegetables for the Glimmies to make delicious soups from. But this spring, the carrots seem to be disappearing. Each night, when we go out to light up the forest, there seem to be a few carrots that are missing from our vegetable patch. I can't understand it. We should find out what's happening. I know, said Spinosita. Let's ask Batlinda and Cerulea to help. They love to investigate. Indeed, Batlinda and Cerulea are the curious Glimmies. They love to watch and wait and solve a problem. Come on, we will hide behind the tree so that our lights don't show and we can keep watch on the carrot patch. So sit and watch, they did. They are very quiet Glimmies, so it was no trouble to sit and wait for a few hours. The only thing they had to do was wear blankets to hide their Glimmies light. That night, at the stroke of midnight, they hear some rustling from the nearby bushes. Shh! What's that? The rustle happened again, 
And then they heard a digging sound. It's the carrots! They all jumped out from behind the tree and threw off their blankets, shining their lights brightly on the vegetable patch. And there was a mummy rabbit pulling on a carrot. We've caught you! Oh dear, said mummy rabbit. Don't be angry. I thought you had lots of carrots to spare and I have hungry babies at home to feed. Can you spare a few carrots for my family? Don't worry. We are not angry. We just wanted to know where all the carrots were going. You can take these ones now. Come back tomorrow after we have spoken with the other Glimmies and discussed what we can do to help. The next night, Mummy Rabbit returned to the vegetable patch where all the Glimmies had gathered to meet her. Hello, Mummy Rabbit. We want to help you. We have lots of carrots to spare and they are just part of what we eat. So you can have as many as you like. In fact, we will light up the vegetable patch every night to help you. We are all forest creatures, after all. Oh, thank you, Glimmies. You are all very kind. Glim, glim, hooray! That night, and every night after that, the baby rabbits had plenty to eat. Thank you, Glimmies. Your magical lights saved the day again.